Welcome to the series on Windows SharePoint Services 3.0, which we're calling SharePoint 101. In this 101 level series, we'll be focusing on the features of SharePoint from an end user perspective. Now, in subsequent series, we'll look at SharePoint from an administrator and programmer perspective. Also, this series will focus on Windows SharePoint Services 3.0. Your organization might use an extended version called Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007, which has quite a few additional features. A Windows SharePoint Services 3.0 is a free add-on to Windows Server 2003 and Microsoft Office SharePoint Server 2007, or rather MOS 2007, is a separately licensed product. Our SharePoint 201 series will talk about the features of MOS 2007. At its core, SharePoint is an easy way for organizations to provision and centrally manage new websites that serve as knowledge repositories. Due to the default security model that's used, these SharePoint websites are usually intended for an intranet. The sites are also typically organized into a hierarchy, which allows divisions, departments, and projects, and even meetings to have a common repository for documents uh, or ideas or any other form of communication that can be collected into a single spot. So as a user of one of these sites, you'll mainly use SharePoint in one of several ways. Uh, you'll read or reference what others have added to the site, and this might be in the form of a calendar entry, uh, a task, a blog posting, or a document, or something along those lines. Or you'll upload and submit your own information into the SharePoint site, and then there might come a time will, where you need to create your own, or you'll ask a SharePoint administrator to create a subsite for a new department or a new project or a new meeting or for some other purpose. Now in this series we'll start with the basics and by the end you should have all the knowledge necessary to read, update, delete, and create sites, create documents, create libraries of documents, create lists and blogs and wikis and discussion boards and surveys and even more. Near the end of the series we'll show how to use Microsoft Office 2007 applications uh, like Excel and Access and Outlook to interact with your SharePoint server. When Microsoft refers to the Office system, uh, this is part of the interaction that they're referring to. It's more than just a collection of loosely coupled applications, but they all work together along with a centralized online resource, aka SharePoint, to store and manage documents and other types of communications. Throughout this series, we'll assume that you already have access to a SharePoint site or a subsite that you can practice with. If you don't, then you're going to want to watch the administration series, SharePoint 301, for more information on setting up a small test environment that you can work on. This SharePoint 101 series also assumes that you have the necessary permissions to create new subsites and documents, modify web part pages, delete resources and subsites. If you don't, you may attempt to contact a SharePoint administrator within your organization and explain to them that you need a subsite with the appropriate permissions to practice with. In the next video, we'll look at how the various sites and resources are secured through the use of roles and permissions and which permissions you might need depending on what you hope to accomplish within SharePoint. You're watching another great instructional video from trainingspot.com, your IT training destination.